Right then, let's check out these mechanical disc calipers. All right, what does that say? Warning, no rotor, do not press. Well, you can't tell me what to do. FBI, open up! Okay, so today's episode sponsored by these bad boys, Bone Conducting Headphones from a, from a company called Aftershocks. Now in the past, I have always shied away from listening to music while out cycling. I mean, it's imperative that I'm able to hear everything around me, especially on my old commute through central London. I mean, 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, it is no joke. It does get a little bit dicey out there, so you kind of need to maintain that spatial awareness. Um, so recently, Aftershocks got in touch, and I'm really, really pleased they did, because I've always wanted to give these bone conducting headphones a go, and now I use them all the time. I mean, the evening before a big ride, I'm sticking the Garmin on charge up there, along with, along with these bad boys. I mean, they're wicked. You can listen to all your stuff, answer calls on the go, and there's nothing in your ears, so you can still hear kind of everything around you. Um, like eight hours of battery life, sweat and rainproof, super light and comfy, and importantly, they easily fit underneath the cycle cap, helmet, and, and, and glasses as well. Um, but the best thing about them, in my opinion, are the physical buttons. So you've got one on the side here for play, pause, and Google Assistant or whatever, and then you've got volume buttons on the bottom here. Um, yes, yeah, so much stuff these days uses touch-sensitive controls, and it's never foolproof, especially with gloves or if your hands are a little bit wet from the rain or whatever. So these, are, these buttons here, physical buttons, um, anyway, if you want to check these out, then use my link that I've uh, put in the video description and you can save yourself a little bit of cash, which is cool. Um, so yeah, big thanks to Aftershocks for sponsoring this video. Genuinely, really cool product this one, so I'm kind of happy to show you guys. Um, anyway, all that aside, let's check out these brakes. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another does my terrible excuse for a beard only serve to increase aero drag? Trace Fellow, production, my name, as always, is, uh, is Luke. Right then, uh, disc brakes. I assume the majority of people will automatically associate this with a fully hydraulic group set. So the force of you pulling on the brake lever is transmitted to the caliper within a closed loop of oil via a piston, which is usually housed within the body of the shifter. However, fully hydraulic group sets for road bikes are still incredibly yeah, incredibly expensive. I mean, one of the cheapest off-the-shelf options, a Shimano 105 7020 um, hydraulic group set, costs you 640 quid or 865 bucks, if you can even find one, because they're basically sold out everywhere. Move up to Altegra and you'll be looking at over a thousand pounds. I mean, I could quite safely say that for the majority of people, I think that's quite a lot of money to kind of swallow for a group set. It certainly was for me when I was building up this bike behind me. But luckily, for those of us that are balling on a budget, such as myself, the blissful rapture of disc braking <laughs> can be obtained for a mere fraction of that cost. I refer, of course, to mechanical disc brakes. So unlike a fully hydraulic setup, the force of you pulling on those brake levers is transmitted to the caliper via a cable. So uh, yeah, you can just use a regular mechanical group set. Now there is quite a lot of stigma associated with uh, mechanical disc brakes and, and we'll get into that. But I've been using them non-stop over the last year and during that time I've tried three different calipers. So today I'll be pitching those calipers against each other, show you some of the issues, the, the issues that I faced and kind of we'll get into a broader discussion around this topic as well. So lots to cover and if you wanna kind of jump around the topics, I've used the YouTube chapters function to kind of split the video up so you can jump around at your leisure. Um, anyway, let's begin with the calipers themselves. But before we do, worth pointing out that I bought and paid for all the calipers and things in this video with my own cash. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Right, so we've got three sets of mechanical calipers at three different price points. So first up, we've got the pretty well-respected Zuintech 
F1s here. Now, these are the most expensive ones that I've personally tried. I picked up this set of calipers for 120 quid, but I've seen them on AliExpress for around 100 pounds. So shop around and you can definitely find yourself a deal on these, uh, on these bad boys. Now, these are basically a hybrid hydraulic style. So when you pull the brake cable, you actuate this piston or plunger here, which drives hydraulic fluid around the caliper and pushes two other pistons, one in there and one in there, which uh, pushes these green pads against against the rotor. Now I've got a little shim in here, um, and if you if you can read that there, that says no no rotor, do not press. And that's basically because if there wasn't this shim in here or there wasn't a disc brake rotor in there, if you were to pull this piston, you could overextend those two other pistons there, and then that would end up spraying hydro hydraulic juice everywhere. So you want to avoid that, but I'll quickly show you. So I'll pull this down and then watch those green pads. See both of those moving in there. So that's essentially how it functions. It's a closed hydraulic uh, hydraulic loop. And I mean, in theory, it's pretty much the same principle as a fully hydraulic setup, but rather than the piston being housed inside the shifter body, somewhere in there, they've located it kind of on the outside of the caliper here. So yeah, with these, with these Uintex, these are a hybrid hydraulic design. Right next up, these Z Race calipers here that I picked up on AliExpress. Now I paid 48 quid for mine, but that also included two disc brake rotors as well. Uh, but you can pick up just the calipers themselves for around 35, 40 quid. Now, as with many of the cheaper AliExpress bike parts, you can find identical looking versions of these just with a, a kind of different brand name slapped across them, which you can uh, see in these pictures here. Now, this is a pretty common practice, actually. And we also saw this with the hybrid aluminium cassettes that I reviewed the last time. Um, yeah, interesting episode, that one. So check that out up here if you haven't seen that already. Anyway, this caliper, although a slightly kind of different design, functions in exactly the same way as that Juventech one back there. So it's a hybrid hydraulic design. Pull the brake lever, compresses this plunger or piston here, which drives two other pistons and pushes the pads onto the disc. So I'll see if I can show you there. Pull the, pull the plunger down and both those pads compress against the disc there. One slight difference between the two sets, however, is that these, these calipers support these pretty fancy ice tech finned brake pads and I've got one got one here on its own. Now the idea is that these these fins are better at dissipating the heat that's generated under heavy braking but I've used both these official ice tech pads and non-finned pads and they perform identically if you ask me. Plus these tend to be a lot more expensive so I certainly won't go out of my way to buy these to buy these finned pads but if you like using these and you think they make a difference then yeah these calipers do support it so there we go. And last but not least let's check out these nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting choice of brand name for these uh, for these calipers. They they are the cheapest, and I would argue probably the ugliest of the bunch that I've got on the on the table today. I picked these up. I picked the pair up for just over twenty quid. I think I paid twenty three pounds for these on on AliExpress. Anyway, they're a much more traditional design. They have a sort of internal camming mechanism inside the caliper. So pulling on the brake moves this arm, which in turn pushes both pads onto the rotor. So if I can show you there, both those pads moving in there. Now, a lot of the cheaper varieties, only one pad actually moves in. So one's fixed and one pad moves, but in this, in this version, both pads push against the disc there, which is uh, which is great. Um, yeah, not much else to say about these, to be honest with you. Pretty cheap, pretty simple. So let's quickly throw all of these on the on the scales. So the Juintec comes in at 310 grams, Z Race 308 grams for the pair, and Deez Nuts coming in dead last at 438 grams. So so yeah, bit of a weight penalty. For those uh, for those nuts there. Anyway, before we get into testing, there is one aspect of this kind of mechanical disc brake topic that I did want to cover off quickly. Okay, so let's not let's not beat around the bush here. <laughs> the, the main reason I chose mechanical disc was upfront cost. I, I mean, I wanted a disc brake setup, but I just I could not stomach the cost associated with a fully hydraulic group set. I mean, if you pick up the, the basic Sensar Empire group set and pair it with those Z Race calipers that I've just showed you, you can get an 11 speed disc brake uh, setup, like, like the whole thing, for about 250 quid, maybe a little bit less actually, or around a third of the cost of a Shimano 105 
disc breaker, disc brake setup. But another reason is just the fact that, um, yeah, I was just curious to see what they were like. As mentioned, not a lot of people have good things to say about mechanical disc, but as, as disc brakes become the, the default on road bikes in the industry, a lot more entry level options are starting to ship from the factory. With, uh, with mechanical disc brakes. So I was just really interested to see what they were like for myself. Now, a couple of other reasons you might choose to run them, namely the fact they're simple to set up and fit onto a, onto a bike. Plus there's not a lot that can go wrong with them really. So I've heard for this reason, a lot of long distance bike packing riders like to use them. They offer most of the benefits associated with disc braking, but without a lot of that added complexity of a fully hydraulic setup. They're, they're cable actuated. So if something goes, <laughs> goes wrong out in the middle of nowhere, chances are you can kind of fix it on the go. Um, and one last reason is the fact that they're just a great place to start if you ask me. If you're building up your first bike, um, as mentioned, they're, they're simple to install onto the frame and chances are you're on a little bit of a budget too. Uh, plus, once you've, you've built up your disc brake bike, if you're looking for an upgrade later down the line, you can just keep everything and swap in a fully hydraulic group set. So they offer a really good upgrade path as well. So look, I'm, I'm not here to argue that mechanical disc rivals fully hydraulic. If you can afford it, or if you're racing and riding competitively, then a fully hydraulic group set is gonna offer you better modulation, allow you to brake a bit later, and just give you a little bit of an, of an edge as well. Um, but if like me, you're just a kind of casual rider, cycling as a hobby, go for longer rides on the weekend and smash a flapjack and a <laughs> coffee at the cafe on the way back, um, then yeah, set them up properly. A mechanical disc offers pretty much all the stopping power you're gonna need if you ask me. But with that being said, which of the calipers stops the best? Yeah, let's find out. Okay, before we continue, if you're enjoying this video, if you could subscribe and maybe hit the like button as well, that would be really wicked. Um, yeah, it just kind of helps feed the YouTube algorithm a bit and really does help me out. So yeah, thank you. Thank you in advance. Anyway, before we jump into testing, few things to cover. All of the calipers I'll be running today are our flat mount calipers. And in addition, I'll be using the stock resin brake pads that come supplied with the calipers when you buy them. I did consider kind of upgrading the pads, but I figure the majority of, of people are gonna be running the stock pads that get supplied with the calipers when they buy them. So that's why I'm, I'm sticking with. In terms of the rotors, the disc rotors I'll be using are these lightweight six bolt jobbies that I picked up on AliExpress for, <laughs> yeah, ridiculously cheap actually, but that's another story. I did consider using these, uh, sort of slightly more premium ice tech rotors i've got a set of these but i've been using these lightweight ones for a little while now and i'm really interested to see how well they cope with the kind of abuse i'll be throwing at them uh, during testing and lastly pop that back in there um the group set i'm running is sensor empire not that this should make much difference in my opinion although i've heard a couple of people say that the the cable throw is slightly longer for uh, Shimano brake levers. So it kind of, yeah, it's a longer cable throw apparently. But I've run Shimano 105 shifters, L through shifters, and Sensar Empire shifters on the same set of calipers actually over the over the last year. And I've not noticed any real difference in, in, in cable throw to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, that is the testing setup. So with that out of the way, yeah, let's get out there and do the testing. Right then, first uh, first job of the day, I've got to bed the uh, disc brake pads in, basically. So I've got a nice hill here. This is where I normally bed my pads in. I'll do about five or six runs up and down here to really build some heat into that, uh, into the rotor and into the pad so I can deposit some of the pad material onto the rotor there. And I'll be doing this for, for each one of the calipers we're testing today. So uh, yeah, lot, lots to do. So let's crack on. So each time when bedding in the pads, I did six runs down this pretty long hill. Two stopping just on the back brake, two just using the front. And the final two runs, I really get the speed up and pull both brakes at the same time, basically, basically as hard as I can. This really builds the heat in the pads and disc. And yeah, we're bedded in, good to go for the test runs. Nice. Right, so here's the setup, ladies and gents. I'm gonna come careening down this hill here and hopefully hit this mark on the tarmac at 25 miles an hour based upon my Garmin, which I've stuck on my bike here. Uh, and then I'll pull the brakes as hard as I dare, basically. And I've marked out on the tarmac here, five, 
uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten meters up to twenty meters now. Because I don't really know how some of these calipers are gonna <laughs> are gonna perform. I'll do six pulls on each caliper and then average out the distance. And yeah, we'll see which one comes out on top. But yeah, lots uh, <laughs> lots to do today, and I haven't even started. So yeah, let's get cracking. So, Zhuantec was up first, and this is a nice bit of empty road with virtually no traffic. I'm easily able to hit 25 miles an hour, and when slamming on the brakes, I'm pushing my body as far back as I can to try and keep some weight over the back tyre and, and prevent it from locking up. Anyway, I did this 10 times back to back and then headed home to install the next set of calipers. So I did a couple of bolts, pulled off the Zhuantec, and slapped on the Z Race brakes. Now, when changing calipers, I also took the time to thoroughly clean the rotors with brake clean to remove any, any contaminants. And it's probably worth pointing out that I use a particular type of compressionless cable housing for the brakes on my bike, specifically Jaguar KEB-SL cable housing, front and back. It's got some fancy Kevlar construction and, it, and it's a bit more expensive than the regular stuff, but it's a bit lighter and really helps reduce that spongy brake feel that cable actuated brakes tend to, uh, tend to suffer with. Anyway, once that was done, did another bedding in session with the Z Race calipers down that hill and hit the test strip. 10 stops later, came back, swapped over to the nut calipers and gave them the same treatment. <laughs> Needless to say, yeah, it was a long day and it wasn't helped by the fact that each time I slammed on the brakes, my Garmin started screaming at me, thinking I'd had a crash. <sighs> okay. 13 meters, 13 meters. Once again, the garment's going off. I think I'm in a crash. <laughs> Maybe that's the sign of a, a really powerful break <laughs> if the alarm goes off. Um, anyway, I got it all done, uh, no major drama to report, none of the calipers exploded on me or, or anything like that, but with, uh, with that out of the way, let's check out the results. So averaged out over 10 runs on a bit of a shallow hill from 25 miles per hour, or as, or as close as I could get really, last place goes to the Z race brakes with an average stopping distance of 14 meters which you can uh, which you can see here second place goes to my delicious pair of nuts with a with an average stopping distance of 13.9 meters so, so pretty close and first place the Zhuantec with an average stopping distance of 13.3 meters so the the Zhuantecs take first place but to, to be frank they are a lot closer together than I than I thought they would be um, I mean between the best and the worst of those scores I've just mentioned that's just over a five percent difference so so not a lot really I, I mean going into this judging solely based on the kind of overall look and feel of these nut brakes I assumed they would be dreadful but they provide pretty much the same stopping power as those Z race brakes but that's definitely not the whole story I mean for starters these nut brakes here despite being cabled identically felt considerably more spongy when compared to the other two calipers and they were very noisy as well they squealed a lot more under heavy braking and after each brake pull the pads either didn't reset fully or maybe the caliper itself warped under the heat or something like that and it just rubbed a lot which you can actually hear in this clip Now this was not an issue with the other calipers, so I don't think it was the disc brake rotor itself warping or anything like that, um, but essentially just the spongy brake feel with these calipers and the, and the noise just really cheapened the whole cycling experience for me. But, but despite this, I stuck with these nut calipers for a few days after wrapping up testing. But whilst out on a longer ride, this issue cropped up. Okay, so I've just come down what I would consider not a particularly long or steep descent down there and I'm using these these nut <laughs> nut calipers here and I noticed this on the front so let me see if I can show you look at the bluing on that rotor these calipers are so bad at dissipating heat they really concentrate it into the pads and the rotors and do such a bad job of pulling it away these are much much worse than the other two calipers I've tried and yeah once they get blue like that 
the the braking performance really just drops off a cliff so yeah not particularly impressed with these nut these <laughs> nut calipers yeah it's got to be said so in order to get steel to that color you actually need to get it over 300 degrees C or around 575 Fahrenheit. So pretty flipping <laughs> toasty. Now on some of the other hills around here, I did manage to blue the rotors in a similar fashion with the other calipers, which you can see in these pictures, but those descents were much, much steeper and much longer as well. So yeah, something about these nut calipers means they're genuinely <laughs> dreadful at managing the heat um, created under braking. But whilst we're on this topic, let's uh, let's cover the general durability of all these calipers. Okay, so a quick word on durability with these uh, with these three calipers here. Now, firstly, I only really bought these nut calipers um, for a, for a comparison between the fully hydraulic, well, the hybrid hydraulic ones, and these fully mechanical calipers to see if braking performance was vastly different with these. Uh, fully mechanical ones, which it, which it wasn't really. So I've only really run these for around 100 miles. They've been fine, but I've no idea if they'll last long term. They're a pretty simple design and that internal camming mechanism is certainly less complicated than these hybrid hydraulic ones. Um, but yeah, I, I suspect they'll be fine, but I just I just don't know. I haven't I haven't run them for long enough. However, these uh, these ones here, I've run both the Z Race and the Juintech well over 1500 miles on each set and, and they've been completely fine. Now my biggest concern going in was that flying down a steep descent that's kind of long and sustained, I'd need to be on the brakes a lot and that would build up loads of heat inside the caliper and therefore the oil, the small volume of oil sort of contained inside. And basically whilst going downhill, I was worried that I'd blow a seal and then oil would spew everywhere and I'd completely lose the braking power. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, basically there's been no such problem or not even a hint of that on either of these two calipers. Um, yeah, and trust me when I say, if, if these calipers were going to blow for that reason, round here in Cornwall, they probably would have done. So I run those very lightweight rotors that I showed earlier that heat up pretty fast under heavy braking. So on longer rides round here, loads of massive hills, one after the other, mean these calipers get heat cycled again and again. In fact, on one of the massive hills that I go down on basically every single ride, I took an infrared thermometer out with me to check just how hot these calipers can get. Let's have a look. 90, 101, 97 degrees C. The brakes are 70, 110 degrees. Now, I read a couple of comments from people that use these Z-Race calipers and also people that use these Juintech ones, claiming the seals have failed on them. So it definitely can happen with either of these two. But I've personally not experienced it. Um, and yeah, they've been pretty rock solid uh, in that department for me. However, whilst we're on the topic of durability, let me show you this. So on the Juintech calipers, where the, uh, the, the kind of piston shaft goes inside the body of the caliper, there's that nice rubber seal there, which seals around that shaft. So when I'm cycling along and I'm braking, no water, dust or grime is gonna get inside the body of the caliper and into that cavity created when I kind of compress the piston. However, on the Z race brakes, that, that seal doesn't exist. So let me bump up the ISO here so make it a bit easier to see. Yeah, so if I compress the, uh, the piston, around the piston shaft, there's quite a big gap there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll throw up some pictures if it's not coming across. But that basically means water and grit quite easily finds its way in there on wet rides. It's not so much of a problem on the front brake, just pop the set back to normal, because the front brake sits vertically on the on the fork. So it doesn't it doesn't really pose a problem on the front. But on the rear, the brake sits horizontally like that. So on wet rides, water and, and spray does get kind of well, it starts to fill up that little cavity in there. Especially if you leave your bike stood up after a wet ride, water does actually pool in there. So um, yeah, not not fantastic. And I imagine after a, after a year or two, that would really start to compromise the ceiling in here and could corrode some of the parts. It's not been a problem for me, but I haven't run these for a particularly long time. So um, yeah, that nice little seal on the Juintech ones is a, is a nice touch actually, and it's missing on the Z race brakes. So a um, bit of a problem on these and something to be aware of. 
Okay, so I've showed you a few calipers, done a little bit of testing, and covered a general durability. But there are three main issues that I faced using mechanical disc brakes day to day over the last year. The first of which, bit of an odd one, a rusty rear brake cable. Okay, so here are a few pictures of that of that rusty brake cable. I'd never I've never seen anything like it before. But let me annotate this picture quickly and I'll kind of explain what's happened. So basically, as you're riding along in the wet, the wheel is spinning around and water gets deposited on the brake cable here and then it trickles down through that little hole there and then starts pooling inside the, the brake cable housing. And after a while, the cable basically started to rust. So there were two things that I did to fix it. The first was that this little cap, which sits on the end of the, uh, of the cable housing there. Jaguar does one, which you can see in this picture, with a little rubber grommet on the end, which seals around the brake cable passing through and prevents water from ingressing into the, the cable housing, kind of downstream of it. The second thing I did was that I, I filled as much of this area here with grease. So I put some underneath the cap before I put it onto onto the, the cable housing and then and filled this area up with some with some heavy grease. So next time I was out riding in the wet, uh, water would kind of spray onto the, the cable housing, would trickle down, but wouldn't get any further than this, basically. And, th and that prevented the problem. But yeah, a bit of a funny one. <laughs> Definitely something to look out for if you run a, a mechanical disc brake setup in this orientation. Secondly, the pistons inside the calipers sometimes got a little bit sticky or a little bit lazy. Right, cool, so here is the disc brake caliper for the front disc. And it's done about 800 miles up to this point, but it needs a little bit of a service, and I'll show you why. So when you pull on the, pull on the brake, it compresses a piston in here, which then pushes these two pistons inwards, which compress the pads onto the disc. But I'll show you, this piston here is a little bit lazy. So if I compress the piston there, as if I'm braking, that barely moves. Whereas this one here moves in quite a lot. So if I show you, there's a massive bias basically towards, towards this piston. Not the biggest problem in the world, it just means that brake pad wear is a little bit uneven. So what I'm gonna do is give it a bit of a clean, see if I can service these at all, and try and make both of these pistons come in together at the same time. Five minutes later. Right, okay, cool. So here is the caliper again, once it's been uh, cleaned up. And I did my utmost to try and clean those pistons. But you'll see it's still not great. A little bit better than it was. So if I pull the lever now, boop, you can see this does pop out a little bit more on this side, but it's still massively biased towards this piston. Um, like I said, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It just means the brake pad wear will be a little bit uneven, but yeah. That's the best I could do with this caliper right here. Now, this issue is not limited to the Z-Brace brakes. It can happen to the Zuintex and even calipers from fully hydraulic group sets as well. I imagine that the fully mechanical brakes like those nut calipers might also get a little bit lazy as well if they're really dirty and, and gunked up. So um, yeah, moral of the story, give your calipers a clean once in a while. Um, and yeah, the, the, the last issue that I faced, the rear brake sometimes wouldn't reset fully. Okay, right, so there's another slight issue with these brake calipers, and I've just got enough a ride, and I've just noticed it. So let me demonstrate what the issue is, and it's specifically with the rear brake caliper here. So I'll quickly demonstrate. So this is the, this is the lever for the rear brake. So if I pull it, you will see. There we go, I've pulled on the brake, the brake's on, I release. It only releases that far. So again, that's me pulling and releasing. Somewhere along the cable run, the cable's being jammed up because if I just put a little bit of pressure on there, there you go, see it releases further. So somewhere along the cable run from the back of the shifter all the way through the bike because the cable run for the, for the rear brake is, is really long and you have this cable housing or cable outer that runs all the way from here, all the way through the bike, out of the frame here, through the bar and into the back of the shifter. So it's a really long run. And if there's any friction along this run, it's gonna affect the release of the brake at the back here. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult to diagnose exactly where the friction lies in the system if, if you face this issue. But yeah, you, you wouldn't have this problem with hydraulic, hydraulic brakes. But um, with cable actuated, this is an issue that I'm currently facing. So I'm gonna kind of have a little investigation 
up at the front here and see if I can relieve some of the tension. But yeah, another slight issue with these brake calipers. Now in that clip, that was a fresh brake cable, so I wasn't suffering with the with the rust that I demonstrated earlier. I've I've tried a Teflon coated brake cable, but that didn't really make much difference. And I've even replaced the whole housing run from the back of the shifter through the frame and, and out the bike. But the issue has kept persisting for me. So um, this is what I've actually had to resort to. For the last thousand miles, rather than running a brake cable, I've actually been using a gear cable for the for the rear brake. It's 1.2 rather than 1.5 millimeters in diameter so easily slips around the bends in the in the cable housing the rear brake resets every time and i can still lock up the rear wheel yeah uh, with with no problem so i don't feel like it's affected braking performance at all really however let's be let's be very clear here this is uh, this is probably not a good idea so gear cables have a little over half the braking strength of, uh, of brake cable. So I do run the risk of the, the cable itself just uh, snapping on me under, under heavy braking. Now under no circumstances would I ever do this with the front brake. Around 80% of the braking performance comes from the, from the front wheel. So yeah, for the front brake, just stick with, a, with the brake cable. Um, but for the rear brake, I'm personally willing to risk it for a biscuit. Um, now, for the obvious safety concerns, I was tempted to not even bother publicizing this fix, but I, I, I like to be transparent, and I think that quite a lot of you out there kind of appreciate that from, from, from my stuff. So um, yeah, it's, it's not a recommended fix, but it's what I've had to resort to to get, to get things working. Um, but, but there we go, <laughs> feel free to lambast me in the, in the comments. I welcome your criticism. Um, anyway, with all that being said, let's finally conclude this behemoth of an episode. So, in my opinion, mechanical disc brakes are definitely a valid option for those of us on a bit of a budget. I've certainly been happy with them over the last year. Set them up properly with some decent compressionless housing, keep the rotors and the pads clean, and just keep on top of general maintenance, and you will be hot to trot. Now, in terms of the, uh, the caliper that I prefer, you might be able to see that after all this is done and dusted, I've got the Juintex back on the bike here. Now, the Z-Brace brakes, they, they came a close second, but once you ride them back to back, you do notice the quality of the braking on the Juintex is a little better, and they just feel slightly more direct as well. They're also much better sealed from the elements, and the mounting hardware you get with the Juintex is, is the best of the bunch. For example, to mount the rear brake of the Z Brace caliper, the supply bolts were a little bit too short for me. So for that reason, I can see people trying to mount mount the rear caliper from the Z Brace and stripping out the internal threads in, inside the caliper. The, the Juintex, on the other hand, came with four different lengths of bolts just to mount the rear caliper. So yeah, they're just a cut above and they're easier to live with day to day. As for the nut calipers, I just, I wouldn't bother. I mean, if you're on a really strict budget and you hate yourself, then, then yeah, I think I've shown that they, they will stop you. But trust me, you deserve, you deserve better brakes. Um, now, a few housekeeping, uh, a few housekeeping bits before we wrap up. Bleeding the hybrid hydraulic calipers. I've not needed to do it yet, but I'm sure at some point they will need to be bled. Now, I have a hydraulic bleed kit up in this bag here. So if enough of you pester me in the comments, I'll, I'll throw a video together around how to bleed these uh, these hybrid hydraulic calipers. And lastly, I'm sure some of you are very interested to see how the calipers that I've demonstrated today stack up against a fully hydraulic group set. Well, my two-wheeled amigos, um, <laughs> in this very box here, I have what I believe is the cheapest 2x11 speed fully hydraulic group set that you can um, that you can buy right now. And once I get it on the bike, which I'll probably do in the next episode, actually, um, we'll run the same gambit of tests and we'll see what's what, basically. So hybrid hydraulic calipers versus fully hydraulic. Um, so yeah, get subscribed so you don't miss that one. And frankly, I don't know how it's gonna go because I've never installed a fully hydraulic group set before. So <laughs> yeah, it could be interesting. Um, anyway, that is all we've got time for in this episode. So subscribe. If you like this kind of stuff, hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. And if you've got any questions or any comments about any of the stuff that I've demonstrated today, then yeah, leave me a comment down below and I'll try my best to get back to as many of you as I can. Um, anyway, that is all we've got time for in this chunky episode. So yeah, thanks for bearing with and I will see you all in the next one. Ciao, ciao.
Okay, so a bit of a funny addition on the on the end here. So I've basically wrapped up filming for the episode, um, and as mentioned during during the tests that I ran, I was using the stock uh, the stock resin pads in all of the calipers. However, uh, now I've finished, I've popped back in my preferred pads, which are a semi-metallic variety, and I feel like the bite on the brakes is much better. So um, I've set up a course again, and I'm going to run another gambit of uh, 10, 10 braking runs with the Zhuintec calipers with semi-metallic pads to see if it, it makes any difference. So I didn't run semi-metallic for the original tests because A, I didn't have semi-metallic pads for all the different calipers I was using, and B, as mentioned, I think the majority of people are gonna run the stock pads that come with the calipers, at least at least initially. Um, anyway, with that being said, let's run, run the tests again and see if semi-metallic makes any real difference. 10 brake pulls later. Right, I've just finished up the 10 runs and uh, the sun is uh, sun is setting on me. So averaged over 10 runs, the stopping distance was 11.4 meters. So a significant improvement actually over the stock resin pads. I, I knew I knew I felt more bite in the brake, so I'm, I'm glad I stuck this at the end. Um, so yeah, just replacing the pads, exactly the same setup as before with the Zhuintec brake, same rotors and things, a significant improvement in stopping distance. So uh, <laughs> what can we learn? Basically, if you run the stock resin pads that you get with your with your calipers uh, they'll do you fine um, for starters but if you're looking for a little bit of an improvement or you need to replace the pads definitely explore some other options so I've tried uh, ceramics uh, fully metallic resin and semi-metallics and the semi-metallics are definitely my favorite um, I get mine from a, a vendor called Noah and Theo on eBay. Um, I'm not sponsored at all, it's just what I quite like to use and they're good value. So I've stuck a link to their pads in the video description. Um, yeah, I think you can get a new set for like 12 quid or something like that. So definitely worth a look, if you ask me. Certainly made a big improvement for me. Um, so yeah, interesting closure to this video. And for those that stuck around to the end, the OGs, thank you very much. Um, right, anyway, that is it. That's finally the end of this rather lengthy episode. So I'll see you all next time. Ciao, ciao. Wow.